Will that mic work if the music's on? Oh, shut the music off. Top, left corner, shut off music or something like that. Yeah, click it. Shut off music or something. Something you actually have to do. Click on iTunes, up, 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 straight up, straight up, straight up, 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 yeah. Quit tunes, way down the bottom. Excuse me. You can let us know if you can hear us. Or start talking and realize that you can't hear us. No, I'll stop digging. So if you can hear us in Texas, you should be able to hear us everywhere else. Okay, I'm going to start a couple minutes early here because you got a bunch of questions. I'll see if I can get to a bunch of them here. Um, Kdet and Ashante are doing very well. She picks up very quickly. She understands the concept, and Kdet is a super dog. They're going to make a good pair. And they will be leaving on Thursday. So one more day tomorrow will be part admin, and then a couple more runs. Going to go over any concerns, make sure she doesn't have any questions, and she's going to get ready to start her journey. Steve, what do you do to get the dog's attention when you are out doing training in public? First of all, you have to understand that way before we start taking them out, even when they're here in the house, they're already starting to learn to listen to whoever they're Spoon dealing feeding. with. What's that? Spoon feeding. Spoon feeding, right? That starts it. So they're already learning to pay attention to whoever's doing whatever task whether it be spoon feeding or walking or whatever the case. What some people don't seem to quite understand is there can only be one boss. And if your dog is being your boss, you're going to have problems. Um, and one of the other questions that kind of connects with this is, uh, let me see if I can find it. I had a question about Charlie and me. So when Charlie goes out with me, which he goes everywhere I go, he knows that we're together and he listens to me. It really doesn't matter of all the noise and exposures and everything that's around us because he only really listens to me. Now that isn't to say that um, Tanner or Megan or Shannon or somebody can't walk him to a different location if I'm not right there because he'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. But once he sees me, he knows where he's supposed to be, what he's supposed to be doing, um, and there's no doubt there. Uh, Charlie knows who is the alpha dog of me and Charlie. 
And when you have a service dog, you have to have that upper hand on that dog so that the routine is consistent and the rules are being abided. If you don't and you let them get away with an inch, they're going to take two inches, they're going to take three inches, and before you know it, you're going to run into problems. So it's cut and dry. You're not being mean to the dog. And I said something the other day about good working habits pay off in the end. If you have poor working habits and are not consistent and you continuously let a dog get away with something, for instance, sticking their nose in the trash can and you don't correct it, it's not the dog's fault. You are allowing that dog to stick his nose in the trash can, then that's your fault. That's not the dog's fault. You're the one allowing it to happen. So you really have to set the rules and stick with them. And there's nobody that I deal with that I don't make sure they understand what is acceptable and what's not acceptable. So if you're feeding your dog steak at night off your dinner table and you go to a restaurant and that dog takes a steak off the table at the restaurant, guess whose fault that is? That's not the dog's fault. You're allowing that to happen. You're encouraging that to happen. They have to have rules and guidelines, and you have to stick to them. Uh, da, da, da. No, we didn't take any dogs to the parade today in Boston. You wouldn't catch me in Boston today to save my life. Not with all that traffic. Um, I don't know if I had a chance to read Jack wrote about him and what you call him, put a daily doggy. For some reason, for the past three days, I have not got the daily doggy. For some reason, but Pam sent me a, I got a thing saying welcome, so I, I must be back on it for tomorrow. But for three days, I haven't gotten the Daily Doggy, and I don't know what to, to expect from the world if I don't read the Daily Doggy. Do you, do you get it in your email? No, well, I always have for years, but last, whoa, whoa. last oh, three days, on. I go. haven't. Okay, go. Huh, that's strange. Well, that's that constant contact. What if anybody else got it? Okay, here we go. Here's the one. Uh, da, 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 da. In terms of how to deal with the issues like that, okay. How do you work to ensure that their, your relationship with Charlie stays in the right frame? My rules on Monday are the same as they are on Tuesday, as the same they are on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's no doubt in Charlie's mind what my rules are. Don't run away from me. Come when I ask you to, and be nice, and I'll be nice to you. But there's really, it's, it's not a hard thing. It's where you're not consistent is where you run into problems. I know that sounds harsh, but it's reality. They're followers. The dog, the dog will follow you. If your dog was loose and you can't catch him, it doesn't help to chase him. No. A lot of times you turn around and walk the other way and they're falling behind. The chasing thing is just as bad as everybody hears me harping. All these veterans that I deal with, I always tell them about the resistance thing. If you have resistance against resistance, it turns into a game. It's the same thing with the chasing. If dog gets with you and doesn't come back to you, then you've got a recall problem. But if you chase that dog, you've turned it into a game. And guess what? The dog's going to keep running away. You've got to have good recall. So if you have to start at a foot and work your way out, then that's what you do. Um, Wrinkle and Steve, I hope I'm getting that right, just text me, they are at 20 feet out from each other and the recall is perfect. But he started at two feet and went to three feet, to four feet, to eight feet, and he's out to 20 plus feet right now and wrinkle comes to him every single time. That's the kind of good working habits that you have to have. And they love to work, so they consider it fun. It's not fun when you're chasing them, trust me. Chasing is a very bad habit to get into. Same with the resistance on the chain. That's why we say snap and release. As soon as you pull and it turns into a tug of war, you have nothing but problems. It turns into a game and the dog's gonna resist just as much as you're resisting. There's no way to get around that. I understand that it's difficult to learn very quickly about snap and release, 
but until you get that down, you're going to have problems. As soon as you start pulling on that chain and holding it, you're creating more problems. And these dogs have been trained a specific way, and there's a reason for that. It works. When something works, we stick with it. Nobody's getting your dinner. Just stay right there. Uh, just like kids, right, AJ? I always compare 12 year old kids. Give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Treat them good, they'll treat you good. And anybody who has been out with me, my veterans, or if I'm helping Megan with some one of her recipients. I always say, whoa, which they know to stop the dog. I'll say, what is your dog doing right now? And it's something you have to pick on very quickly. You have to be able to read your dog or you're going to run into problems down the road. I understand when you've never done it before that it's sometimes difficult in the beginning, but there's a few things that I say continuously every time I take people out. What's your dog doing? Stop the world. If your dog is not doing what it's supposed to be doing and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're wandering all over the place and the dog's taking you for a walk and you're not taking the dog for a walk, we're not accomplishing anything right now. Stop the world. Is she in your chair then? What's the problem? Figure out what the problem is, what your objective is, and start over. I would rather you take two quality steps and have it right than to take 20 and have it all over the place. Um, and a lot of the veterans laugh because they always say, you know, they email me back, I've stopped the world four times today. That's fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings whatsoever. If something's not going right or something looks wrong, it probably is, stop the world, regroup, and start over again. Before you know it, it'll be such second nature, you won't be stopping at all. One of the very first things I teach people is, walking a straight line and it seems so simple but if you're not used to working with a service dog before you know it the dog is taking you for a walk and that does no good for anybody if you've got to go from this door to that elevator you should be able to walk on a straight line and that dog should walk with you in a straight line if that dog is taking you like this nobody's winning all that is is confusion and the dog thinking it can do whatever it wants oh yes yeah. Can you stay tomorrow, Travis? Oh, uh, to get there. Yeah, I feel with Nicole, but yeah. Well, either, well, because I, yeah, we'll just, we'll keep it in mind. It's good. It's all good. I'll figure it out. Keep going. Don't worry about it. Just another kink in the woods. Oh. Uh, Toria, Midwest. Dog. Good. If your dog is being that clingy, all right, take and care. wanting more and more love, my best advice is get that dog out for a whole lot more exercise, a lot more work, uh, and wear it down a little bit uh, and make it tired. I see more problems with dogs that are not getting worked enough or not getting enough exercise that it starts to create problems. Two is not in the ball game right now. No, I mean T-O. Oh, two. Two. Directed two. Yeah, the thing with Charlie is, you know, the question is, how does Charlie handle it when I take other dogs out and he's either up in the training room or he's down at the barn getting exercise or whatever the case may be? Don't let Charlie fool you. Charlie knows that when I get off at 5 o'clock, he's going with me. Or when I go home, he's going with me. Um, it's, he just knows that's the case. Uh, and it's not like I don't see him every time, either whether it's in the window or when I walk by him, I say hello to him, tell him, wait, everything's fine, we'll get out. Um, he knows where he starts to get nervous when it gets to be 5 or 6 o'clock, and he'll start barking because he, he knows it's supposed to be his time. Along with that snap and release for the thing, I take all these dogs out. I literally use two fingers to control that dog. 
on the leash. I don't have a grip like this and doing all kinds of stuff like that. I have two fingers and quick motion. They hear the chain and they feel the little bit of tension on it. But it's literally just two little fingers. It's not much at all. They know what you're saying. As soon as they hear that or feel that, they know that they're supposed to be making a correction and they're looking to you for what the correction is, which is where the verbal comes in. If you're saying wait and you're giving that little snap, they know that they're supposed to they're slow going. down. We don't ever have any problems with frostbite because we don't allow our dogs to stay out that long. They're monitored all the time when they're out. And same with heat stroke. Um, we watch these dogs unbelievably close for injuries, illnesses, anything like that. Um, so we don't have an issue with it, which goes back to reading your dog. Your dog is shaking is probably a reason why it's shaking. How long has it been out? I don't teach nail clipping with recipients. Um, I will tell you what I do say. I probably have Charlie's nails. Megan does a very good job of that. Colleen does a very good job of that. They both have a lot, a lot of practice in that. Um, I probably clip Charlie's nails once a year because he works so much that they wear down on their own. Um, if your dog is a service dog and you have to cut those nails every 30 or 60 days, something tells me that dog's probably not getting out enough. Or you're spending an awful lot of time on the grass. Because Charlie's nails, he fouls them right down constantly. There's an art to that whole nail clipping thing. I'm not sure I'm the right one with my vision. You can always do it with a, with a, with a, with a emery board if you have to. Yeah. You, you sit there long enough. Or what's that other tool that's a, the, the Dremel, Dremel or whatever? The Dremel. Yeah. I did it one time when I first got Charlie and it looked like a murder scene, so I, mean, <laughs> I really don't do it that No, because it bleeds. Oh, they bleed fierce. It bleeds. It doesn't stop. It looked like the. It was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. I learned right then that, one, my vision is not that good. And, and one of the things they say you can put on it is, is cinnamon. Yeah, I've done I've a, never cinnamon, sugar, flour. Flour, glue. Yeah. I mean, it looks a lot worse than it is. It really is just a little nick, and, and they'll bleed terribly, but it will stop. It just makes a heck of a mess until it does. Yeah, exercise is huge with dogs. If they get cramped up and they don't get the right exercise or the right work, they just come up with different things to keep themselves busy, and that might be why the dog is so clingy. I mean, that's how you get, you know, they start chewing on furniture, they start doing things that they never used to do before, get in the trash, you know, pee inside, all those little things like that. Um, I would start right off with giving them more exercise. Good questions today. They're all important questions. Um, you know, I'll end with this. When I have a new recipient being matched with a dog, I always say to them, what are you going to do right now? What is your objective to do right now? And break it down, take one step at a time until you start to understand what you're supposed to be doing. Moving too fast, not having control, letting the dog do all kinds of weird, crazy stuff isn't going to help you out. You need to slow the world down, do things right, do it correctly as far as the leash control, and before you know it, it all just kind of blends in. It drives me nuts when I see people out of control with dogs and, and they think everything is fine, and it's not fine. You should be able to walk a straight line from A to B 
and the dog want to follow you, want to be right beside you, want to do its work. And they will as long as you allow them to do that. The reason we don't have a lot of complaints about service dogs from here is so-called service dogs and they're acting out of control and crazy. Well, kind of hard to blame the dog on that one. Okay, Pam is up, mail call is up. One more leash to make and I got it done. Here I am. Here. Here I am. That's not where I put my mail on. I don't know. I I don't know what where it's you. Oh, your rolly is a bunch of. Okay, I need a rolly bleed on somehow. Here we go. Okay. Beep 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 beep. <laughs> 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 the boats go down there. Okay. He didn't, he didn't say, there's one thing that I think people ought to do when they're learning to work with a dog, is you look at the top of their head when you're walking with them. You just kind of look at the top of their head. You can tell what they're going to do next. But you might trip at the same time, so it gets complicated. It's one of those things like walking and chewing gum. Did you hear that guy chews gum? Did you hear that story? Which guy? The guy that, the guy that, the comes press out of the White House and the talks press to secretary. Who? Well, the press secretary. Press to secretary. be honest with you, I haven't spent a second paying attention to any of it except for Melissa McCarthy did a skit on. Well, she used a gob of gum this big. Yes, that's what baby. Yes, and then uh, Judy. Uh, what, what's her name? With Wilbur. No, no. Judy. No, 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 no. The one who comes on and with all the problems, with craziness. At any rate, she stacked up. 35 pieces of gum and said, this is what he swallows <laughs> in the morning or whatever. But anyway, swallowing gum, anyway, they'll swallow more than that if you're working in the White House, I guess. At any rate, we now have Harold Wanley hiring Cheerios. Very good. This says number four. Uh -oh. How did we get that? I'm not my job. It also says Melissa. I did? Oh, uh, okay. Yes, so All right. right. What, is, what, what is this? Old news? What? Is this old news? That's your order. Not by order. All right, I'm not I'm putting it right back. Okay. Complicate the bookkeeping we'll we'll keep around here. Um, okay. It's called the stool filing system. <laughs> Vertical oh, surface. New, new mail, old mail, <laughs> orders. <laughs> Bentley, you're such a handsome lord of the manor and so smart to know when a box includes treats that may need tasting. Please give the enclosed to Carlene. She uses, she wishes. There's two bucks there. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. A CP. Just Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. That's what it says. I don't want to send the outside here. Well, you can play with the outside. That's my phone. That's two dogs. What happened to the phone? What happened to the, the bank? We get the bank. Where the bank go? Lind maybe Linda has it. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Where the hell is the bank? She returned it. You have it. Oh, it's probably behind me someplace. Uh oh. Oh, I see it. <laughs> Tucked in there someplace. I can't turn around. Okay, we got the, that okay, file. That. There we go. All right. And now we have Jan. I, Jan. She mailed it on the fourth. She always puts that up in the corner. Seattle, Washington. I've heard good things about Seattle. Carlene and crew wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you for letting the puppies run around the house. Uh, I don't think yeah. you had a choice at that point. <laughs> Investigating all the new things, there was sound too. Still get a kick out of seeing you and everybody else trying to get them to sit and eat. 
off a spoon. It does seem like the athletes are doing better, but the gifts still need more practice. That's true. Appreciate all the things you do to get things on camera for us to watch. Also happy to hear another veteran is coming to get matched with a dog. You all should be so proud of yourselves. I know I'm proud of all much else, not much else to say. Have to get ready for my neighbor to put in my mailbox, take care. Please keep, keep up your fantastic work. And then this goes in there. And then these, Dave Barry. She got, Dave Barry's good, she's a funny guy. Dear Math, Math, is that Math? Please grow up and solve your own problems. I'm tired of solving them for you. Huh, okay. That's funny. Is it? Yeah, I Math mean, problems. Dear oh. Math, grow up. I'm tired of solving all your math problems. I, I, I didn't get that one, but oh. that's okay. Most, most kids have eaten crayons and they're responsible for over 3,000 Visits to the ER every year. Oh, most kids have eaten crayons, and they are responsible for over 3,000 visits to the emergency room every year. Oh, that's, that's a good crazy. one. And the average American will go through 18 doctors in their lifetime. Okay. Yikes. Maybe not a lot of doctors. A lot of doctors. Okay. To Haydn and everything. Everyone. Hyden. Hyden. Hyden is like the one of those Merle. guys over there. He's a the Merle. He's the Merle that um, with the dog on his head. He kind of reminds us of Perry Cole, feature-wise. Really? Yeah, he's the sweet little one that just sits and watches everyone. They're all sweet, but he does a lot of sitting and watching. Are you thirsty, there, fella? Jesus. This is for Hyden. Thanks for all the joy you bring. Happy Valentine's Day. Ace and Jay, two black cat littermates. Bruce and Kathy Leroy. Leroy? Oh, you could figure that one out. Okay, we'll put that. Is that supposed to get two chicken bricks, did they tell me? I already forgot. No. Did you say two chicken bricks? Okay. People. He's maybe he's waiting for the box of T R E A T S. Oh, this is People Magazine. That got filed. Ugh. I don't think we have any boxes, buddy. Health services, that's a bill. I can show everybody over this. there. A national poll. This poll is officially requested. Ocean Conservatory. What am I supposed to do? Oh, this is problems facing the ocean. Uh oh. I know there's, there's problems. problems facing the ocean. I know there's a lot of problems facing the ocean. Especially there's dumping garbage in it. I know, it's terrible. don't even know. We're overfishing, but then you got to say, how do we get our fish? We're, I just, the whole There's thing. too many people. Let's start there. Oh, I know there are two. I've Let's been go off a few. I, well, as harsh as it sounds, I've been complaining about overpopulation for a long time. Because well, I remember in Sandwich, in the 90s, I tell the story all the time, and the Cape, Cape Cod did a build band, band. They banned all building for 10 years. They did an estimate of open buildings, homes, yep. and everything. And they said, you can't build for 10 years. If you fill these homes and these businesses first, then that's how you handle population growth. We never ever... That's not how I handle the population. Well, no, but I'm put... saying, but we never did anything to, to yeah. keep up with our growth. Population growing and growing. Well, I, I, I am concerned about the ocean, but, you know, it's the population's problem. For a long time, Planned Parenthood is the only 
was the only charity I that and the Red Cross were the charities that I gave to. Yeah. Planned Parenthood. I mean, these poor women over there in Africa getting raped and having babies. They don't have any food. I mean, really. Actually, did you see this new thing that they're giving to the ladies in Africa? No. It's, uh, the woman inserts it and it has um, spikes in it. Spikes? It's like a tampon for them. Yeah. And so if they get raped, Huh. The guy has to go to the hospital because now he. I just I I don't I just read wow. about it. That's what they're passing out to these women so wow. that they can handle that situation. That's a good one. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's That's crazy though one. what we've come to. It's just nuts. All right, questions after that. Well, <laughs> I hadn't heard of that one before. Yeah, I, ju I just. But uh, the Bible, the Bible says it's less. It's gonna, you know, there's too many, yeah. too many people. And, you know, the, all this, this business about whether women should have abortions or not, I think that every child born, you can do a DNA and you know who the father was. Why are we not insisting that every child be DNA tested for paternity and we'll have no more of these unwed mother routines, you know? Yeah, well, dead be, well... Uh, another subject, deadbeat dads, is a huge. Oh. Uh, deadbeat dads, oh, is yeah. a huge epidemic. Well, those you just shoot. Well, but but <laughs> that leaves, you know. Yeah. You stay. You you make these babies. You, don't let them jump at your face. I know. She likes. She well, if you know, then don't let them do it. No, I know. <laughs> I... That's the place, and it, and teeth are not allowed. You, you give a snap on the nose and take your hand away. If you get teeth. They're not supposed to touch you with their teeth. See? You know, I'm going to say get up on the sofa pretty soon. No, no, what do you want me to do? The, I tell her. Yep. Yeah. Like, Grab a hold and slap them down. They cannot do that. No, I know. I just don't know what you want me to do. Well, grab them and put them down. Okay. But you got to be fast. No. Because just... those puppies are fast. No, I know. You're going to get gashed face. <laughs> They're bad. They, they Those bounce. teeth. They bounce. They bounce up at you. They're not supposed to do that. And it, by the time you do it, everybody on camera will have a heart attack. <laughs> That's just too bad. <laughs> These puppies have to learn matters before they get too big. What are we doing next? Questions. Do we have any boxes? No boxes. No boxes. No boxes. I checked the kiosk wow. and there were no boxes at the time. Okay. Okay, I have water. Oh, I call it a kiosk. Okay. Okay, I'm here. Alright, 39. Yeah, someone said they saw the same thing about the problem with the rape and the... I don't know, it must have popped... It, I just read it the other day. Hmm. My fur babies are good. They're doing well. How was your day and how was Sizzle's training? Sizzle doesn't get any training today. My, my day started very early. It's doctor's appointment at 8 o'clock in the morning. I had to come back and take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> they got me all fouled up because I'm off into my meals. Yeah. I don't know which meal I'm on. But it better be bedtime pretty soon. I think we're next for dinner. Next for dinner? Yeah. Okay. Who, they're asking who's in nine all alone. All the baby, all the babies. All the dogs, I think, are in singles on the farm at this point, unless we have... We do try and, we tr do try and get them into singles. they got to live yeah. that way. Yeah. Besides, they get awfully rough on each other. They do. Yeah. I mean, they, you don't hear it, but there's a lot of... Uh, screeching and when they're biting an ear or um, were there any ties between Misha and Jasper? Well that's another whole topic. Apparently there was a semi tie. Four and a half minutes. Oh that doesn't count though does it? Well you know that's the old wives thing it doesn't count but it, it does mean that she's beginning to be more receptive. Yeah. I mean he's a professional you know? Yeah. <laughs> well. If it was possible, he would have. I did suggest 
that we cover the arena camera tomorrow, and that's where we'll put them. Oh, okay. Because I think we got footing problems. You got all kinds of problems. Yeah. They're talking about Valentine's, mailing Melissa's cards, um, and that's thanks, Steve, so we can go back up here. Is Sizzle able to wash, walk on a leash? Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, she, she, she walks right next to me like she's working. Yeah. Well, you take her out frequently. Well, yeah, I mean, I once, go at least once a week. <laughs> yeah. and she go, Well, she goes out for car rides at least a couple yeah. times. I'm sure you must... Um, how did I learn about SDP and start working here? I watched uh, Chaos's Litter in the fall of 2012. Yep. And then I moved here in the fall of 2012 back to Mass. And then in July of 2013, I started volunteering on Tuesdays. And in September, Carlene asked me if I wanted to do an overnight on a Tuesday, so I stayed and did a Tuesday overnight. And then Maria texted and said, do you want to do a Friday overnight? And I said, sure. And then I just started doing overnights, and then I just have been doing them Stop. since then. Yes, my email is pampaul at gmail.com. Somebody, I don't, they want to email me for something. I have, I don't take any vitamins. <laughs> they said, what do I... My day was good. Do I take vitamins? No, I don't take any vitamins. Do I think the gifts are more attached to me than the athletes? I don't think so. But I think that the, the gifts tend to run in a cluster, so I think it's a little more noticeable. They, they kind of move in a cluster. But I did, I did notice that they, they all came running over one time, but I don't think they like me any, any better than the athletes. I think the athletes are just kind of used to hanging out. They, you know, the athletes have been out in the kitchen for a long time. The gifts are new to the kitchen. So the gifts have to get used to foot traffic, sounds, light, the, all the things that they haven't had back there. So everything is new to them. Oh, Seagram's a sweet girl. Well, they're all sweet. We have too many people, and also with medical advances, we're living too long. No offense, but I'm... And now, I'm, wait a minute on that yeah. one. <laughs> to... Our bodies are outliving our brains. We're well, that could be. <laughs> yeah. What is the normal length of a tie? We, I think the record around here is 51 minutes. It's, you know, 10, 12, something like that. Like t between 10 and 20 probably is yeah. the average. Yeah. This is a quick yeah. mail call. Yeah, yikes is right. 51 minutes. Well, the funny one was something like 20 minutes down by the pond in the rain with Megan holding the umbrella. We were afraid that the mother, the female was going to drag the male into the pond and drown him. Yeah. <laughs> Megan went running down in the rain and um, it was raining out so I gave her an umbrella. So now she's standing down there in the rain and the, the umbrella over the door. It was, that was a pretty funny sight. That was a pretty funny one. Just said, I uh, wanted to say they saw uh, Bella and George on The Secret Life of Pets. Really? In the UK. Oh, okay. Wow, is it amazing. You do an amazing job with all your Danes. I feel really pleased that I found SDP and can let friends know that you're out here. You know, Danes have just not been given a chance to be a dog. We have discovered that Danes are great. You know, they, people have had them just as comedy factor around the house. These do dogs are capable of work. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe she could post a link to it. The Secret Life of Dogs, including Bella and George. I'm not even sure what that... 
Is that a, something different? It was. It was a. I, I passed it on to somebody over in Britain to see whether they could get my friend over there to, to watch it. Okay. I have a friend in, in Belfast. So we have. So it has been kicked around. Apparently, it is. I don't know. Okay. We okay. We can try to find it, or maybe somebody would might have it. So I hadn't been there very long when I took Wit and Chester. No, well, I started in July. I took Wit and Chester in April, I think, Marchish, Aprilish, and Martha came with us a week or two later. So spring, anyway. If today's tie counts, Misha's first possible date would be April 10th. Well, you guys keep track of it. <laughs> Well, that was Tina, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that Tina? Yeah. Yeah, right here. The book about the $80 champion jumper was made into a movie. Thank you for the recommendation. I recommend it. I, I know about that book. See this? No. No, the one, it's a white. I know about that book. I read it. Or whatever. If it works for Danes, it should work with small donkeys and mini horses for outside use. No, it works for mini donkeys, but I don't think horses. They just, they, oh God, they are dumb. They are so dumb. I'm sorry to tell you all that. <laughs> the instinct of a horse is to fear and flight. They'll run. If they get confused, they'll run. That's why you hit a horse to make them run. A confused donkey stops and stands still and tries to figure out what's going on. There, I just watched a video on there, I don't know who sent it to me, of do donkeys trying to get out of a pasture. And one tries and one tries, and then he stamps back and another one comes in, takes the thing in his mouth, puts the fence down. Just undoes the gate just as neat as he could have done. And everybody got out. And that's what, donkeys will do things like that, whereas a horse would just run and hit it, maybe break it and hurt himself. Yeah. Cut himself on stuff. You know, I mean, they're so dumb. They're so dumb. And they, therefore, they're dangerous. I mean, they can get to running, even even small ones. With a donkey, they're not going to run. They just stand around, think about things. Oh, somebody found found the episode of the that oh, you good. shared. Oh, they think it's the trailer, but someone's looking for it. Uh, do we need anything... Uh, chicken bricks are number one, two, and three. But Tom's pet tabs, we have those. We have towels. We have washcloths. We have yeah. the baby food. Really just like the, the um, Advantix or the front line or whatever, and the chicken bricks, are the, I think, right? Yep. Yeah. Is, is Purina interested in doing a commercial with the dogs? They haven't said anything to me. Well, yeah. I think... Um, it's too, it's too. I don't go out in public with my three Danes. Um, we've got a, we, we, we. You're a herd. We are a pack and we <laughs> stick very close to home because um, with the two deaf boys that will bark whenever Martha barks or whatever, I just. Um, we've got a, we, 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 you're a herd. We are a pack and we <laughs> stick very close to home because, um, with the two deaf boys that will bark whenever Martha barks or whatever, I just,